Hi, my name is Rich Jones, and I'm going to show you my 300 gallon African cichlid Mabuna planted tank. This is a very unique tank. It has Mabunas coexisting with barbs, tetras, and other community fish. Uh, it's got Anubias, but it's got a whole host of other types of plants. For all these diverse elements in this tank, uh, it's a pretty simple setup. Having a large tank helps, of course, a lot. CO2 is a must to have bubbling into your tank, otherwise the plants will not flourish at all. And the lighting is just LED, it's a pretty simple setup. I've got some old, 10-year-old LED lights, and then I have some others that I've just added in recently. But look at the, the vegetation, how lush it is. The rocks you see right here are uh, called holy rocks they're from uh, Austin, Texas area, and they're not really just—they just have a lot of holes in them. And they're limestone, and so they actually help buffer the uh, high pH. And I've got uh, found those in my backyard, and they're all over this this uh, part of the, the country. But. I've never seen another tank, either on YouTube or just anywhere else, that has all these elements. Uh, I've always been told, or looked at the videos, said that you cannot have babunas with live plants, except for anubias and java ferns. And java ferns are ugly-ass plants. But look at the, the little cherry barbs there, the denison barbs. See some of the flame tetra there. So this aquarium is actually the showcase to a game room that I have in my home in Austin. Now I'll show you the, the game room here in a little bit. Now you see the quarantine tank I have to the right side there. Quarantine tanks are a must. This plexiglass tank is probably 20 years old. Uh, it's 10 feet long, 2 feet high, and 2 feet wide. It's been a great tank. And it's been a real simple tank to maintain. I'll, I'll show you the, the guts underneath the, the stand here in a little bit. This is the pH probe that regulates the, uh, the regulator that runs the bubbleizer. That's the bubbleizer. And that little bubbleizer uh, that puts out the CO2, that's the only one for the whole tank. And then I have a, a CO2 tank underneath the stand uh, that's just activated by the regulator. It's on a timer. 
that's the tank right there and the little timer and off to the far right of the side of the aquarium is the uh, the pH meter that uh, electronic meter this is a reservoir on the, in the back of the aquarium the water falls down into this and there's a little filter pad you can see the blue filter pad down there and and that little white thing in the middle at the bottom there is a little water alarm in case the water flows out it goes off and then there's a battery backup these are the lights uh, that silver stripe there in the front is those are 10 years old uh, then the black ones behind them uh, I bought recently notice the grill work uh, covering it right there those are shelving from the container store it helps keep the fish from jumping out and I've got some pink fins in there that like to jump that's all I have for the for the lighting so that's all pretty basic so I'll give you a little history on this aquarium uh, I've had it for 20 years and I first set it up as a saltwater tank and it was magnificent and uh, it was a reef tank with fish and all types of corals and shrimps and crabs and such uh, but the problem with the technology in those days there was it, the water pure water quality was really hard to keep going and so it tended to gradually decline and it became a money pit and very big frustration so I decided to turn it into an African cichlid tank with uh, plastic plants and after a while the plastic plants degrade and they look absolutely terrible so I decided I'd never had a planted tank before and so I went and <laughs> traded the African cichlids in and got sword tails and guppies and cardinals and that whole setup and the plants did great uh, it was, all the plants flourished I had to cut plants out all the time because there were just too many of them the trouble was the uh, they're not as exciting as African cichlids are and after a while I got bored and was kind of longing to have African cichlids back again I looked on YouTube and in the online about having African cichlids with a planted tank and they said the only kind you could have were the only plants you could have were Anubias and Java ferns and, and they're those, they're ugly the Java ferns so I figured I'd try an experiment I'd go ahead and put uh, Anubias on one side of the aquarium and, and on the other side in the middle I'd have the the plants that I had always kept so I threw a bunch of the other plants out and put the Anubias in and I was kind of expecting the, the Africans to just eat up all the plants and it, it didn't work that way uh, worked fine and the I introduced the Anubas uh, kind of slowly I bought them from Tampa Bay uh, cichlids and bought like schools of fish and quarantined them and then gradually put them in and so they were small starting off with but now it's been like a year and a half and you can see they're bigger uh, the nice thing about getting the schools is that so that you get a, enough of one to where they can breed and you don't start getting uh, uh, crossbreed any fish the as you can see the the tetras and everything else are doing fine uh, in fact they kind of hold their own and the uh, tiger barbs are probably the most aggressive fish in here in terms of being aggressive against themselves as you can see I like air stones uh, it kind of agitates the water I think it gives a good distraction for the dominant fish to, so they'll see and pick on the other fish pretty easily and it just adds a nice flow look to it now these fish will dig uh, these haven't been too bad lately 
So if you're starting off new and you want to do the planted tank, put the rocks in first and put a lot of kind of flat rocks so that they can't dig very well. Uh, like I said, this was kind of an afterthought. So they have some areas that are digging and I just kind of put plants in there, rocks in there to kind of support them. The gravel that I got initially was was already seeded with uh, plant nutrients. Now the with time, the, the gravel becomes full of nutrients from the fish waste and stuff like that. So, plants also help a lot with just purify the water. Uh, I do a water change maybe once every three weeks. So as you can see, it's just a really simple setup. See, there are some red eye tetras there. I've got to school about ten of those. where they on the bottom of the aquarium where they dug a hole there underneath that flat rock there's some red tails up there the red fin uh, or I'm sorry pink tails I'm not great on the new nomenclature on all these fish and plants I have two of those that's about all you can have in this big tank otherwise if you have a smaller tank you just can get one that's it fight each other. And there's some Burchard eye and they've got uh, some baby fry on the side of this black rock in the middle of the tank here. So if you have any comments leave Leave it in the section. This is my first YouTube video, so hope you enjoyed it.